Pessoal, canal Refitec de volta, e antes de iniciarmos esta primeira entrevista da série, gostaria de deixar dois recados importantes. O primeiro é que esta visita ao Rif Palusa e esta viagem não seria possível sem o apoio da Aqua Atlantis. Para quem não conhece ainda a Aqua Atlantis, eles têm uma gama de produtos em seu portfólio para todo o ecossistema marinho. E no Brasil é distribuidor das marcas Neptune Systems, que fabrica o Apex, Ecotec Marine, das luminárias Radion e Bombas Vortec, Aqua Illumination, das luminárias Hydra e a GHL, com suas dosadoras. Se vocês necessitam de qualquer informação sobre esses produtos, entre em contato neste telefone, via WhatsApp ou pelo website e a equipe da Aquatlantis vai entrar em contato com você, fornecendo todas as informações necessárias desses produtos e esses produtos são fornecidos no Brasil com nota fiscal e garantia. Vamos em frente, pessoal! Vamos lá, pessoal! Mais um recado! Muito importante, essas entrevistas vão ser em inglês, então basta clicar nesse ícone para quem está no computador, é, ajeitar as legendas no local de preferência e na engrenagenzinha que vocês veem aqui do lado também, é, ajustar a uh, fonte, tamanho da fonte, etc. E também vocês têm a possibilidade, pessoal, de uh, uh, selecionar uh, tradução automática, bastando selecionar o idioma em português, ok? Bom, isso para quem está no computador. Para quem está no celular, alguns celulares permitem a tradução automática. É, e para acessar, é, ligar as legendas, basta, basta você ir no canto superior direito do YouTube, naqueles três pontinhos que estão ali, e selecionar legendas ou Closed Caption, certo? Ah, e selecionar o idioma que estiver disponível para o vídeo. Pessoal, espero que vocês gostem. Vamos lá! Entrevista Riftec. Julian, before we start, I will just ask you, you know, about your career, you know, how we started in the hobby, yeah, you know, and uh, any connections that you have in our region in Brazil. Pessoal, canal Riftec aqui no Riff Palusa 2019, diretamente com o ícone da Two Little Fishes, Mr. Julian Sprung. Julian, thank Hello. you so much for receiving us here your time. I know you are very busy. You are one of the speakers here, main speaker. So, yep. thanks a lot. My pleasure. So you wanted me to tell you about my uh, history in the hobby? Yeah, got, yeah. That's the first question. Started. How we started? How how yeah. you get into this hobby, into this world? Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, I grew up on Miami Beach, Florida, uh -huh. and I, we lived on a residential island in Biscayne Bay. Uh -huh. And one of my brothers uh, had already set up some aquariums in a neighbor's house uh, wow. because my my father didn't want the salt water in the house. He thought it would, you know, corrode uh, any metals around. And uh -huh. He was right about that. Uh -huh. So that time, how many years the, ago? This is back, uh, would be in the late 1960s. Wow. Okay, I was born in 66. Uh-huh, uh -huh. um, So when I was four years old, my, my brother took me to a neighbor's house to see his aquariums. So that would have been 1970. Um, and I was fascinated. I don't know why he took me there, but maybe he just figured, oh, let, let me show it to my brother. Uh -huh. And I loved it. And then he took me collecting with him around the island. We we could use corals and nets. fishes. Well, corals, no, but fishes. Uh -huh. at fishes, that time. basically. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but there was live rock too, and we did, uh, you know, we did collect live rock and use that as part of the, you know, the basis uh -huh. of the aquarium. So it really wasn't very long after that that I, by the time I was five years old. Uh, you know, as I said, it was a residential island. Uh -huh. And this is a long time ago, you know, it's a little safer. <laughs> I used to go off on my own uh -huh. and collect things, and I would find buckets, containers, and I would put algae and rocks and catch fish, uh -huh. and I would change the water every day or every other day, and I started keeping things that way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, honestly, when I was five and six years old, I was doing that. So, and that's how I got started. Eventually, my father let my brother have aquariums at home, and he had two of them. And then um, I eventually got 
to take care of my first aquarium in my father's office because once we had them at home, suddenly my father was interested. In it. <laughs> okay, so he wanted cool. one in his office yeah. and he had me taking care of it. And that was when I was 10 years old. So it grew from there. It really was my brother got me interested in it. And then I became interested in growing corals because I, I thought they were beautiful. It was a challenge, you know, the idea was they were impossible to keep and I thought, no, this isn't really impossible. I'll figure it out just like we all do. Um, so, yeah, when, when I was in high school is when I started really biology working. Biology and... Yeah, so. I mean, I, I was always interested in, in science, science and biology. I had another brother who was interested in chemistry and so I got... Wow. He, he used to grow crystals at home. Wow. Um, so, you know, I had good background in my family. Um, but by the time I was in high school, I started collecting zoanthids and some small soft corals and even a few stony corals mm -hmm. and trying to keep them. Yeah. Um, I met uh, Bruce Carlson at the Waikiki Aquarium in 1982 when I was in high school and mm -hmm. he gave me a giant clam, a, a uh -huh. tank-raised tridacna durasa. A clam? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Durasa. Great. It was the first wow. batches of, of durasa raised in Palau uh -huh. Uh -huh. by Jerry Hesslinger. And he had a bunch of them and he said, here, you know, you have so much interest, take this home wow. with you. So that was great in 1982. Wow. Um, and, you know, I had a head start on what, you know, we now think of as commonplace, but, uh, yes. you know, I, I was fascinated with it back then. Do you have an idea how, how, how was your contribution for all this, you know, reef tankers around the world? You know, Do you have any idea? It's hard to, yeah. hard to really um, quantify that or really understand yeah. it. I know that I had a lot of help and I had a lot of friends yeah, who were also interested in this. Uh -huh. So like I mentioned Bruce Carlson, uh, also Martin Moe. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to meet him when I was, I think, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My father um, took us to Marathon. My father was a, uh, was a police officer, mm -hmm. but he also um, was an airplane mechanic and he had an airplane. He flew a plane uh -huh. and we flew down to Marathon Key. And we visited Martin Moe to see his clownfish breeding. This is back in the 1970s, early mm -hmm. 70s. So um, I, I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time and meet people who, wow. who knew a lot and, and were able to influence me and teach me a lot. Sure, sure. Um, so I then you know, continued to grow with, what, with that experience and mm -hmm. then I shared it with, with the world. You know? yeah. I, later on I met people in Europe um, who took me traveling with them to see what they were doing with their aquariums. Um, I met uh, Charles Delbeck in Canada mm -hmm. and I wrote uh, the three volume series, three of books volume series with yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, he was influential, you know, took me to see really great aquariums in the Canada reef scene back in the, uh, was the late 1980s and early 1990s. So really all those connections helped and each one of those people also is part of this hobby. Yeah. So surrounded I mean, by people that really knows what's happening inside yes, the reef tank. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. And so I, you know, I've always even to this day continue as a avid hobbyist. There's still many many things to learn. Yeah. Um, many mysteries to solve. I agree. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so yeah. great, Julian. And you know, after that long journey you know, it's really fabulous who read your books, you know, it's fascinating. Uh, not especially about what you know about the ecosystem we have in the reef tank, but also, you know, uh, you, 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 you teach the information uh, in a way that people can understand and assimilate that. Okay. Different than talking with technical people that are in right. universities. Not, not bad, but, you know, it's different. We, need, we need to talk in a good language, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I come from an academic background. Yeah. You know, I went to the University of Florida and my degree is in zoology. Uh -huh. I could have continued on, you know, and gotten a master's uh, or doctorate degree. Um, but I had an opportunity to work in the aquarium uh, industry right out after I graduated with just my bachelor of science degree mm -hmm. and I never went back but I know that I've, I've maintained contacts in the academic field and I have also been delighted that's fine don't forget to have your parking tickets validated at the parking desk <laughs> I've maintained contacts in the academic uh, field and I'm, I've been delighted to see how they um, 
have started uh, in many ways the past well, 10 years. Sure you have your <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of universities. <laughs> Greg, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you know him? <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 He's still going to talk. There are universities growing corals now. Mm -hmm. And not only do they explain things differently when they you know, write them, they also think differently about it. When you go to a, a lab in a university growing corals, you'll notice that it looks like a lab setting for growing corals. Yeah. It's very yeah. rare to find a university setting up a, a reef. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is interesting because it just it demonstrates a different thought process. You know, they're eliminating variables and making this very pure. Okay, I'm cultivating this coral under these controllable circumstances, but there's a lot lost by doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the flip side, we lose a lot of control uh -huh. to be able to make uh, good experiments by creating our ecosystems. Yeah. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to be successful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Different goals. Now, when you say I explain things in a way that's easy, the truth is I understand the whole everything. Uh, yeah. I understand the perspective of what the scientists are doing, and I understand from a hobbyist point of view yeah. what a hobbyist wants to know. How do I have success? Yeah. yeah. And so that that's and I was lucky to be um, to have the ability to explain. Not everybody can write or, or do that. Yeah. To me, it's just natural. It's second nature. Yeah. Uh, so it's my pleasure to hear that from you and from other people say, oh, you make it easy to understand. That's what I try to do yeah, because great. then we can have this. So many people, <laughs> you know, if, if it's presented in a way that looks too complicated and yeah. too difficult, nobody will want no, to do it. We, we, so, we'll not get there. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, Julia. Yeah. Uh, you know, people in Brazil uh, yeah. well know you also for the fa fabulous reef tanks you have at home. Yes. Especially that one that I mentioned to you, right. that uh, we've been uh, watching uh, maybe for seven, seven years, more, you know, more, more than that, you yeah. know. Uh, I got, I fabulous tridacinas and uh, yes. a refugee, uh, yeah. no skimmer. Yeah. Uh, I believe also this reef tank has been evaluated, evaluating by the time as well. It, it, it evolves. Yeah. Yeah, um, and there have been a few changes I've made over it. Most recently, I changed the lighting over the tank uh -huh. and put uh -huh. LEDs on it. Uh, not because that's something new Can you talk about what, what the idea you're using? Well, um, I was given a gift. <laughs> ah, <laughs> and good. so uh, they were the Ecotech, um, uh -huh. uh, what do you call the... Uh, radion. Radions, yeah, radions. Radions, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. They're uh -huh. Radions, the latest generation. And uh, the color is... No problem. They are one of our sponsors as well. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, you use it... Uh, 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 T5 T, T or T7 or HQI well, for many years? Well, I, I, HQI, yeah. I, I bought many years ago a very expensive uh, luminaire light from Italy. Uh -huh. And it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Uh, the, the light was made specifically for one controller to control the LED, or yeah. not the LEDs, the uh, T5s. The T5s. And I didn't want to, I, the, the luminaire cost over $3,000. No. And I didn't want to have to spend another couple thousand plus for the controller. And yeah. So I thought, yeah. ah, I'll get a different controller, and it never worked. It was designed specifically for that. So I was never happy with what I had, uh, but it worked. You know? yeah. yeah. Just the halides was enough, the, the uh, 14K HQI 400 watts. But the tank looked relatively yellow compared uh -huh. to other tanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So people looking at the videos would go, oh, his corals aren't colorful. <laughs> but they actually were. If you were there yeah. in person, you could and see And especially them. when we record, yeah. it's worse than that. Right, you know? right. Yeah. But life, it's much better. I yeah. agree with so, you. Yeah. So now when I switched to the uh, LED. LEDs, the colors... The colors flowed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were colorful. Now you can see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the tank looks really, really great right now. Uh -huh. It, it suffered a, a setback because we had a hurricane, uh, Irma, that hit yeah, us. Yeah, remember that. And that killed most of my fish. Wow. Yeah, and some of my corals, the Acropora corals, died. But of course, the, the corals that I had were ones that were tank raised, so I can replace them with the same exact corals. So they didn't really die. Wow. It's like losing leaves in a way. Yeah. Um, the fish, I could, you know, you can't replace yeah. them, they died. Yeah. Uh, a few fish survived fortunately, um, and I have gradually been putting new fish there. Most of the corals survived, you know, only the Acropora is what yeah. I lost. 
uh, and so I have, still have really big wow. colonies of other corals. And, and you probably have life from uh, you know Florida reefs. Uh, yeah, I do. Around. I have gorgonians. I, I have yeah. the pleasure to dive, you know, do yes. scuba diving in uh, Molestus Reef. Beautiful, yeah. Well, Key Largo. It used to be beautiful. Wow. But... Wow, yeah. it's it's fabulous place. It's, so, it you is had a nice. Call, you yeah. should have seen Molasses Reef in the 1970s. That's wow. all I can tell you. If you think, do you think it's nice now? Uh huh. <laughs> I have uh, academic friends uh -huh. uh, who go there and they cry to see. You know, basically say, you know, there's less than less than 10% wow. coral cover now, and you know all these algae. Uh huh. I, when I go there, I because I, I did see it. Uh -huh. You know, back in the day. I, I look at it and I'm sad to see the loss, but I also know because I'm an aquarium hobbyist, just like I lost corals due to the hurricane in my aquarium, yep. Yep. I can transplant it and grow it and it really doesn't take that much time. And there are people doing that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think a lot of scientists are skeptical of the efficacy of that. Um, I am less skeptical. I know that it can work, but we have some issues, of course, to consider the reality of facing up to uh, the warming sea temperatures yeah. and the increasing CO2. Um, there is a lot of work being done and, to, to and improve the um, hardiness of the corals. But ultimately, you know, it's, it's something that the whole world has to face. Yeah. Uh, and it never will, but it has to. Yeah, I'm, oh, you know. yeah, I'm not, uh, you know, yeah. agreed uh, with, uh, you know, taking corals, you know, from everywhere, uh -huh. inadvertently. But I believe we as a hobbyist, we are helping, yeah, you know, to are. keep the corals also in the nature. You know? Yes, yeah. it's true. Yeah. 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 And, and we're learning things that is benefiting the understanding of the biology of yeah. corals so that anybody working on restoration yeah. has a much better um, chance of success uh, both on the level of simply fragmenting corals and on breeding corals. Uh -huh. The hobby has really contributed a lot to that. Great. That's great. Julian, yeah. uh, talk a little bit more about your reef tank. Do you, you know, you do, do you, you are the principal of Two Little Fishes. Right. We are going to talk about your products, but in your reef tank, obviously, I think you use your own products. Yes, yeah. What do. products do you use in your reef tank? Okay. Bio pellets or so on? Yeah, well, the, the most important thing for any uh, aquarium for growing corals, um, in a very short period of time, you need to maintain calcium and alkalinity because mm -hmm. the corals rapidly, yeah. uh, as long as they're healthy and the conditions are right, they're sure. depositing a skeleton, they rapidly deplete calcium and alkalinity. So for that, I do two things. We have a product called Sea Balance. Sea Balance. Which is a two-part calcium and alkalinity supplement. Mm -hmm. That's not just calcium and alkalinity, it also includes all the other ions in seawater mm -hmm. in natural seawater ratios. Great. So that once the calcium and carbonate is deposited, what you have left is a seawater residual, so it doesn't disturb the balance. So I have that dosing in with a dosing system. Uh -huh. I use an Apex system and their I'll dose. Oh, use Apex, great. Yeah, and yeah. their dose pump the dose and pumps. the dual dose. Uh, That's really so nice. I just fill it, oh. A and B goes in yeah. there. And my tank has so much coral that I have it dosing every 10 minutes <laughs> is going in. So I have that, plus top off water is with Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser. Calcium I use two for my, my, my yeah. top off water. So yeah. with all of that going, I'm able to maintain adequate uh, calcium and alkalinity balance. Aside from that, um, you know, I feed my sea veggies to the fishes. We use our uh, veggie mag. Veggie mag. I and, use that. Um, right. Pouch feeder. I use to feed frozen foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use mag feeder. Mm -hmm. It's a magnetically coupled ring. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sea veggies into flakes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I pour that into the ring, and my fish. That's one of my go-to foods. If I when I come home. And the fish see me, of course. They want to eat. <laughs> they want to eat. The, the jar of the flakes is uh -huh. there. I put it in there. <laughs> then I don't feel bad, like, you know, exactly. I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to them. Because they get angry sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. really do. You can see it. Yeah. Um, and then later on, I, you know, I'll feed frozen or I'll give them a sheet of nori yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, aside from that, let's see, I add Acropower, which is Acropower. our amino acid supplement. Mm -hmm. um, that I add by hand. Um, I, you know, I could set it up on a dosing system. I just yeah. haven't done it. But it's it. not every day, so it doesn't. Well, matter. Yeah. I try every day yeah. or every other day, something like that. But I uh -huh. add it by hand, usually yeah. when I'm feeding the fish. Sure. That's all. Sure. So, 
No big deal. Any carbon carbon dust? I do. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, activated carbon. I use our product hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon. which is really popular in, yes, in Brazil. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Really popular. It's so good price. I, I mix good it. Quality. I mix hydrocarbon with phosphan. With phosphan. Yeah. Oh, you great. can blend the two sure, of them. Sure. Sure. And I have that in a reactor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as the bio pellets. My fish population is not so high. Uh -huh. I don't have a nitrate level to deal with, so mm -hmm. I'm not using the bio pellets. Okay, okay. But I have. I've played around with them before I ever started selling. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's not something that I need. Uh -huh. Not something that everybody needs. But if you have a, a yeah. tank where there's a nitrate issue and you want to bring it down, then. That and works. in your point of view, uh, Julian, yeah. what is the main difference using bio pellets or those, uh, you know, yeah. no pox or? There, there's not a huge difference it's really more of just the physical um, it's not a big chemical difference it's more physical the bio pellets are a solid and the bacteria grow on that solid and eat it whereas the liquid you're providing essentially the same thing a source of carbon uh, but dissolved in the it's water. It's more an efficient way, probably. Well, it's it's different. Um, you know, some people would say it's easy to overdose the, the liquid, but if you know what you're doing and you know how to dose it, yes. it you know, it's an alternative. Yes, an alternative. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, it's good okay. time. Uh, Julian, uh, talk a little bit. We have some uh, controversials in Brazil uh, uh, regarding uh, the amount of volume you circulate in the tank. You okay. know, in your tank, yes. uh, what, what is the ideal? you know, amount of volume that okay. you have to circulate, 1x or yeah. 2x, or yeah. tell us about I that. I think people get confused about yes. that. Yes. Um, yeah. There's two different circulation modes. Mm -hmm. There is the circulation between the aquarium and the sump, and the sump. The filter, sure. and there's just movement within the aquarium. Great, right. yeah. For the sake of being energy efficient, uh, in the average home aquarium, Mm -hmm. It's really okay to be, you know, say two or three times an hour okay. between aquarium and sub. Great. So in my aquarium, which is really like 250 gallons, let's uh -huh. say, uh -huh. a 500 gallon pump mm -hmm. would be enough, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you might want to go a little bit more. Uh, maybe you do 600 gallons or 800 gallons, but not more. Uh -huh. I don't, you know, anything more, you're wasting electricity. Yeah, and okay. uh, if, if you have more, let, let's forget about electricity. Yeah. If you have more, is that bad, good or bad? It's or really, you're matter? wasting electricity. Wasting electricity, okay. And, and if you think that that's not bad, I think it's bad. It's bad. Because it contributes to greenhouse <laughs> gas. To environment, and, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. so you, use energy more efficiently by putting a pump inside the aquarium. Inside the aquarium. A circulating pump. Yeah. Like, okay. you know, a, a propeller pump. So five times is, is maximum in your opinion. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's Four times, five times. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, too much. Yeah. Uh, great. Two to three times is great for that and then other pumps in the tank. Yeah. If, if for some reason you don't want to have any pumps inside the aquarium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a recirculating loop. You know, some people will take water from the overflow mm -hmm. and put it back into the tank, not from the filter. Yeah. And you don't want to have that. Well, then maybe five times an hour makes more sense. It makes more sense. Yeah. But Depends what they have inside the reef tank right. as well. If they have acropolis, probably a little more. Oh, more. yes. Yeah. So for the acropora, you really want to have, you know, lots High of High flow. Movement. Yeah, like 10 times an hour, but not from the sump in the tank. In the tank. Yeah, the great, flow rate great. should be like that. Uh, Julian, one yeah. more question. Uh, we, we are facing our revolution uh, with the ICP tests. Yeah. You know? Uh, we have our friend uh, Aysan Dashti, you probably know sure. him from Triton. Yes. And have you ever, you know, make any, any ICP tests in yes, your race Yes, I tank? have. I, yeah? I, I, and I, like it? You know, yeah, I, I do. Um, the, the point is that there's a, a lot of very useful information you can get from it, but the... Um, level of detection on certain things, you know, some of the trace metals is it, it's so low, you understand, uh -huh. that uh, there's information that you probably aren't getting from it. And the test results have to be accurate to be useful. Yeah, yeah okay? I agree. The, the test that I, I have had appear to be accurate and is, you know, have helped me understand mm -hmm. what's happening in one tank or another. Um, if there's been a problem where I, I've suspected heavy metals, I've been oh, able yeah? to you encounter. Had that? Wow. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it, so yeah. it's useful. So it's yeah. useful for you. you, you what are your thoughts? What the future brings for, for reef tanks? Yeah. You know? 
Well, but I wanted to add one other thing that sure. the only thing that I'm concerned about with the ICP testing is that it for the new hobbyist, mm -hmm. it gives two messages that I don't like. Uh -huh. One that the hobby is complicated. Uh-huh. And two, that by getting test results, you really will have control. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I both agree. of those things are wrong. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But for the the advanced hobbyist who really has their feet wet, they really know what they're doing, the tests are really useful because they already know what's going on. And then, you know, they suspect a problem, whatever, they can check and then they can correct and they know how to do it and it doesn't seem so complicated. But for somebody new, presenting that information, it might be overwhelming. They have a long way first to understand what is going on, at right. least the base, because nutrients and, uh, right. you know, el base elements, trace elements, Correct. before getting to that. I agree with you as yes. well. I've always felt that even just test kits yeah. provide a misleading right, sense of security. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean by the, the kind of a false security is that a pet shop might say, you know, a hobbyist comes in and says, my fish died. The pet shop says, oh, bring me your water and let me test it. That gives the message that something about that water test will be able to explain why the fish died. And most of the time that's not true. Yeah. 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 Usually it's disease that causes yeah, that, yeah, which yeah. has very little to do with the water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Quickly. Really. What the future brings for, for reef tankers? Um, gosh, <laughs> I, you know, there's a lot of things I know and a lot I don't know about that. My, my concern is, is about what's happening with um, shutdowns of collection areas. Uh, Hawaii having difficulty, Indonesia, um, Fiji. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the restriction on availability of, of fishes and invertebrates is not a good thing for our hobby. Some people might say, well, you know, aquaculture will solve that. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Indonesia was doing mariculture of yeah, corals and it yeah. got shut down. So. We have to pay attention to that for the future, yeah. and we need to join together uh, to fight it politically. It's yeah. important. Uh, aside from that, I'm, I'm certain that there will be more hobbyists like myself who will achieve more success with breeding, uh, make more discoveries. Uh, there will be new fishes and new corals discovered. <laughs> and hopefully some really exciting ones. Yeah. And there may even be, uh, you know, just as we have designer clownfish, there may be some designer corals, some things done. Yeah. We, we are like having that. engineers, chemistry yeah. people coming yeah. to our Rob, you know. Correct. They can help us in that, many that, ways. That's true. Yeah. Plus, yeah, new technology, yeah. new equipment that, yeah. that makes the Julia, hobby so thank yeah. you so much for your time here. My pleasure. Uh, congratulations for your line of products. I'm a big fan. and. Uh, we expect to have you in Brazil. I, I look forward to coming back. It's we, been we'll, a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, in the uh, in, in future, maybe we can have a Riffy Palooza in Brazil. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a possibility. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. Have a great yeah, speak sure. today. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. So, you'll send me uh, an email so I can Absolutely. see that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'll, give, I'll send you the link. Ah! Hats. Guys, one more thing. Hi, pessoal. Olha Julia here. That's for you, man. Thank you. <laughs> this is uh, your, your, your fans in Brazil. Okay, obrigado. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pessoal. Yeah. Once again, my friend. Thank you. <laughs>